Yo, ready, already, 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 already. Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show, where we talk about real life, but we don't take life too seriously. My name is Shireen, and we have Sindhu here. Sindhu is a diversity and inclusion consultant and communication professor. So today is going to be our part two for anti-blackness. We did a video where we talked about anti-blackness in the South Asian community, and we um, asked our Instagram communities about how this shows up in their lives and examples, and so we wanted to share that. So one of the things that I realized after we I put a call out to ask uh, people that follow me on Instagram and just my community of South Asian people on how anti-blackness shows up in their lives is that a lot of people think that anti-blackness is like overt racism, right? Mm -hmm. um, meaning like racial slurs against black people or thinking that black people, that you're superior to a black person. And that's not really what uh, we're talking about with yeah. anti-blackness. It's more covert. Um, it's less uh, visible. And um, we have... Uh, grouped the feedback that we got into three different themes um, and we obviously don't have time to share all of the stories but we're just going to share some significant ones to help you understand how anti-blackness might show up in South Asian communities. So the first one was disapproval of romantic relationships and I had an Instagram user reach out to me who happens to be Malayali and um, told me that his cousin just told her family that um, she was in love with a black man and his family was not happy about it. Um, he said specifically the older members of their family, the older generation was just very upset saying that it would be a huge shame on their family and um, his uncle had called him and said are you ready to be a dad because when your first cousin gets married and has children you know what's gonna happen to this black guy that she's marrying he's gonna not be in the picture and you need to step up and be a dad right the idea that you know black men are not fathers they don't take care of their children which is a stereotype yeah um, that's reiterated by society in many different ways. Right, and then um, I have heard a family member, an uncle specifically, we were watching a football game and there was a black football player on the screen. And mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what, what we were talking about, but the topic of he probably doesn't have a father came mm -hmm. up. Stereotypes are not all true among all black people. And yeah. I think it's just like this this conversation about like not people not having fathers and whatnot this is like learned behavior so in the same situation the um i've heard that that uncle's daughter say things that are negative about black people and so she's learned that obviously from her father and with the relationships i think another thing is a lot of us here if you're a south asian woman growing up in this country mm -hmm. you probably heard you know you can marry you try to marry indian but you know just definitely don't bring home a black guy and yeah. for us it's like don't bring home a cut and right i was just yesterday hanging out with a friend who said that he didn't realize that you know he actually participated in anti-blackness but he has a sister right. and he would always tell her you can marry whoever you want but no cut right and so that in fact is an, an example of anti-blackness right and you know like for my family my, my sister married a, a black man 15 years ago and this was very long a long time ago and um, you know my family was supportive like we came together mm -hmm. and although it's very different and we know that everyone is not like this like we know that there are a lot of situations where you know it's just off limits for like romantic relationships. The second theme was colorism. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is another covert way and the idea that lighter and whiter skin is more beautiful mm -hmm. and darker skin is more stigmatized and not as attractive um, was a, a big theme for pe the feedback that I got. And um, I think in, in general, there's a negative stigma. One of the um, I, Instagram users messaged me and she grew up in Texas and she said that from a young age, um, her mom would take her to the salon to get bleaching facials. Yeah. And it wasn't just her, it was like all the, the Indian girls that she knew. Right, how many people do you know that use Fair and Lovely? Yeah, I mean like, <laughs> it's a multi-billion dollar industry in right. India and Asia, it's yeah. like lightening your skin, but like, this is American born girl who's in Texas, like going to a salon mm -hmm. to get her, her skin bleached. You yeah. Know? And, it's, and the mom is taking them, I mean that, you just gotta think about like, what is so bad with having dark skin, but we have these Eurocentric notions of beauty to believe that like lighter is better and it's really yeah. prevalent in our community. Um, I have a um, nutritionist, she's in the Bay Area and she's South Asian and she said that she has um, clients that are American born Indians that will come to her that are pregnant saying does eggplant make, will eggplant make my baby's skin dark? If I drink milk will it make my baby's um, skin lighter? Um, and she's like I'm just so stunned at these American born Indians who will do whatever they can do to ensure that their unborn babies um, have lighter and whiter skin. Another theme came up with nicknames. So yeah. 
um, another person reached out to me and said that when she she's dark skinned and when she was born her grandfather created a nickname around for her that translated into black or like blacky right mm -hmm. and that she had a tub of sunscreen that was on their kitchen counter and right. she was forced to use the sunscreen every day where it was like a problem where she would have like fights with her family because yeah. she didn't want to use sunscreen right so it's right. not just like hey use sunscreen so you know you protect your skin from all right. the rays it's like use sunscreen because otherwise you're going to be dark right and I'm sure all of us have heard that like whenever you've gotten a tan mm -hmm. people call it out right everyone always calls out when the skin is darker it's something that people in our community notice yeah and they make this negative connotation mm -hmm. to having darker skin I heard a young gentleman that had started growing his hair out and he had curly hair like tighter curly hair and he was talking about how his mom said like you have carbon hair now and cut it Right? Mm -hmm. So she's making this connection of black hair. Karumban means black in our language. Mm -hmm. And it being a bad thing and wanting him to have less of a connection yeah. to like black people and having mm -hmm. black hair. Um, and we even talked about like, you know, using the word Kalu and Karumban. Yeah, like it's just a word. But a lot of times when people are using it, they're using it in a negative way. In a negative way, yeah. And, and with that example, um, another Instagram uh, user messaged me and said that they have an auntie in their community named Karabi Kunyama. And again, Karabi means black in our language and Kunyama is her name. And we were kind of saying like, isn't it interesting that when somebody's dark, we, we call it out and we like give them a nickname. But then when somebody's light skin, we don't say like Velata Tessi or Velata Tankama, which is our mom's names and our moms happen to be really Really like. <laughs> right. Um, we 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 just call them sundari and beautiful, right? We yeah. say that they're just gorgeous, and um, you know we kind of idolize their lighter and whiter skin, but we always call out the darker skin, uh, you know, people. And I think that's just something to think about. So those are all ways that you know colorism, just some of the ways that colorism manifests in South Asian communities in terms of colorism. And the last theme was forbidden friendships. So, uh, and this is similar to like, you know, the forbidden romantic relationships, but this is like, you know, from a young age telling children don't play with black kids. And so yeah. I have somebody who told me that they grew up in an all white community and they had been living in that community for seven years before a black family moved in and the person had befriended the black child and they were playing in their house and their dad came home from work and when he the kid left the dad said you cannot play with that person anymore you're not allowed to play with this black neighbor mm -hmm. and the um, person who reached out to me said she was so upset and asked why would you say that and he's yeah. like well you know the white neighbors just accepted us so we don't want to go backwards. Nobody wants this black family to live here. So we don't want to be friends with them. Otherwise, it's going to look like we're supporting them and we want to be, you know, accepted and, you know, appreciated and, and continue to, you know, have the status that we earned in the last seven years. Right. And that's actually a reoccurring story that I heard as well. Like, no, you can have white friends, you can have Asian, mm -hmm. other Asian friends, but not black friends. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think a lot of this, like, you know, there's maybe fear behind it. Being scared of the unknown not knowing black people like mm -hmm. on a personal level and I think you know what we've we've also gotten some feedback of like resistance to mm -hmm. this conversation and people were feeling like you know maybe this sense of like you know I, I'm not racist mm -hmm. I'm not anti-black yeah. or my parents you know they they can't control it or you know this is something that's that, learned that's learned mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. and that is that is okay we're not we're not trying to blame people we're not yeah. trying to make this about like you know, you're bad and we're perfect. No, no, not at all. Like we both. I'm working on my anti-racism throughout my whole yeah. life. It's a process. Yeah. But I think that like into what you said, I had somebody write me with that. Like, you know, my parents, they don't know any better. This is the way that they were socialized. It's hard to unlearn something that has been there for decades. And my answer to that is, yeah, it's hard to unlearn it, but you can unlearn it, right? Yeah. So we have to make the effort towards anti-racism and be allies with black, um, you know, communities and black Americans. Um, and that takes a little bit of work. So we right. just have to be willing to think about it. And I think yeah. if you take anything from this video, realize that anti-blackness isn't overt racism. It isn't mm -hmm. racial slurs or feeling superior. It shows up and manifests in many different ways in South Asian communities. So I think part of you know the reason that I talk about anti-blackness because I think allyship is so important um, between yeah. communities of color. And you know, in times where we're hearing our president say, you know, go back to your country, um, it affects people like us, South Asian immigrants. We need black and indigenous people to stand up for us and against xenophobia, just like they need 
us to stand up for uh, them and stand against and speak out against racism and the oppression that they've experienced. And so I think, you know, we really need to to unite together um, as, you know, immigrants, uh, communities of color, black and indigenous people, mm -hmm. um, and to support each other. Sindhu and I are making these videos because we care. And we want to, you know, create awareness about this topic and dismantle anti-blackness. And we hope that you join the journey, you know, have those conversations with your peers, have those conversations with the older generation. Please reach out to us and um, let's continue this conversation. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Sindhu, for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me again. Yes, and thank you. Bye. Bye.